here is the skirt assembled and I added a waistband to the skirt uh, to show you that actually as independent garment as a skirt it also looks nice. So this is the advantages of lining the dress with then both the skirt and the top. So and um, I didn't show the, the back, the, the draping of the back because it is simple. You can have uh, the dots at the back. Of course you need the center back seam. And you may have uh, two dots on both sides in fitting the back. So uh, I don't need to show this. You, you might know the process of uh, draping the back. So and now we are going to make the, the top part. And uh, as I said, the top part is, uh, is made of a, a pattern, of, of a piece of fabric of a simple shape. I will show you what I cut here this. So it's actually a rectangle, uh, a, a square, a square. It's a square about 45, 50 centimeters here on all the sides, of course. Uh, half scale for this one, for the really dress form. And uh, in the middle of this piece, of the square, you uh, will cut out the 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 uh, circle, uh, the radius of the circle 2.53 centimeters again half scale, so then five six in full scale. So and then I folded this piece of fabric uh, in uh, two times, and then I cut out a, a, a quarter of the uh, square which is this one, right? So this is how you prepare the, uh, the fabric for draping the bodice. So, and let's start. So here you have the waistline indicating, indicated. Here we need the waistline. Of course, I don't want to remove the, the skirt. Um, so the waistline of the skirt will help us to drape the top. And also it's good to see the proportions. We don't drape separately the top and the bottom. Yeah, we see the whole look and I watch and I observe the picture at the same time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to place this piece here. Yeah. Like this. Like this. And... Uh, now we look at the back, we look at the back and uh, you know you, you also you have options here, you just uh, pin, create let's say the center back seam here, immediately just uh, connecting these two edges together, right? But, but, uh, I was observing the angle here, the angle here, and I decided that we need to, uh, to have a little bit different angle looking at the uh, picture here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create an overlap here. You know, the, I must also say that we placed the, uh, the, the piece so that our neckline that we cut out starts a bit up the normal neckline of, on the dress form. Later we will cut it out, you know, the, the proper, the, the one that we need for the dress. So I'm overlapping here to reach the angle that, that I want here. And just pin. You may correct later. If you want. So this is the starting point. The starting point, and I will 
the neckline is basically uh, having, uh, it's not a neckline, it's actually a, seems like a very small stand. Uh, we are having the raised neckline, let's say. So, and it's actually, looking at the picture, it's quite uh, a straight line at the front. So, I'm going to cut here. And hold just to imitate what we are going to have. What we are going to have. So something like that. Something like that. So and basically uh, with these shortcuts on the shoulders, we uh, we have created the neckline. Easy. So now we are going to um, drape the bodies. So I smooth the fabric down to the waist. You have to have enough uh, ease also uh, at the front. So and uh, what we are having basically here, we are having the if I if I draw uh, the line uh, following the center front of the mannequin, you see that we are having the bias here. So the center front uh, is visible behind our bias uh, uh, direction here. So, and this uh, will allow us to make a very simple bodies. And this is what we are going to do now. So, uh, Keeping this here, I add the pins at the apex point. So I make I making sure that my um, my uh, fabric stays at the shoulder, at the end of the shoulder, right? And now we are going to drape the front. So. I will drape one side, then you can transfer this one on the other side. Easy. So I also uh, mark the center front immediately and the waist as well. So the skin goes in here, in here. And simply, so here at the side seam, you may use the normal side seam. Remember, we moved on the skirt, we moved the side seam further towards the back. Here, it's not necessary that the, the side seam of the skirt is connected with the side seam of the bodies. So you may use the, the old, the normal side seam here. And I will pin. You see, I'm smoothing the fabric. Yes, I'm not pushing the fabric, I need the space here, I need the ease, and I pin into the side seam here. That's it. So now we turn. I don't even cut, I don't even clip the fabric here, it's not necessary because of the bias, right? So here we have a nice, uh, nice uh, fitting with the ease. Now we go to the back. We go to the back. I add the pin here at the back, at the center back. I also draw the center back line immediately. Just transfer the center back. And now so 
I try, I try to bring this to the pin at the front. Which is actually could be an option, but I want to have the back a bit a bit more fitted. So and I'm going to make a dot here. Just roughly, let's see. Just roughly. And then I drip the waist. the waist. And now I will connect connect center back and center oh, sorry, the, the back and the front together. So and we almost done, so I just need to find the 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 um, the edge of our sleeve, which is basically a kimono sleeve. So you may use the the dripping tape. To help yourself, which is actually not a bad idea. And here I need to bring this line, I slightly mark it, to the waist point. It looks like a wing. I will cut it now. The body's basically finished. This is how it looks when we finish the whole bodies, and uh, these dots at the back, the seam in the back, and the seam at the waistline. Okay. I must remind that actually we draped this uh, dress from muslin, from cotton muslin. In fact, the dress is made of uh, silk, eventually it's a silk, and I should have been draping also from the silk or uh, polyester similar to silk, because uh, you don't see the same look, the same fluid drapes as on the picture. Uh, it's a little bit uh, structured, more structured than uh, on the picture, but you can get the pattern even when you use muslin. You can get the pattern, transfer this pattern onto the uh, actual fabric and get the dress done from actual fabric. It works. So look here. So when we have the neckline raised, yes, now it stays uh, without the uh, touching the shoulder here at this point. Once you have it from the real fabric, from the actual fabric, fabric some softer fabric, silk, you know, it goes a bit down and will create something like this, uh, like a little drapes, little folds, let's say, right, which is visible on the, on the, on the picture. Right? You may go a little bit, a little bit more up to create more of a, uh, uh, let's say, stand or more
for raised color, so it's up to you, but basically we can use this. So in conclusion, uh, what you have to uh, consider, uh, which is actually very important to consider having the um, lining, especially in the skirt, yes, proper lining from proper fabric that will help to support these drapes. You may even have some additional hand stitchings at the beginning of each pleat, which will help to hold the, the uh, and connect with the lining, actually, which will help to, um, to support these three drapes in the front. Of course, it's good to have the lining for the whole dress. Yes, it's basically a must. So, we finished.